We read the text, The Wild Robot by Peter Brown, and it's about a robot that finds themselves stranded on a wild remote island. We picked up on elements of, of how she might be feeling because of what the author had described of where she was and what she was encountering, and talking about how we would feel if we were in that position. You'd be pretty sad not being able to see anything. <laughs> yeah. Like, you wouldn't know where you're going or, like... like and who's island. in front of you and who why you're talking you're to. Yeah, while you're there. And the island has like lots of trees and everything, so it'll be hard for her to get around. Even though a robot doesn't necessarily feel human emotions, they still have a processing that they need to do to work out where to go and how to function. Our school is lucky enough to have a beautiful natural dam area, which is fully fenced, so it's not accessible to students unless we are doing a particular activity. It's a beautiful space for them to be able to explore and become that robot that also this is an unfamiliar place and they're trying to navigate themselves. We had a, a large wooden crate that the students were packed into and then that was positioned at the entrance to our wild island. So they entered the play world through the wooden crate as if they were coming out and landing on the island in the, way, the same way that Roz the robot did. And then they were then allowed to explore that environment and play being a robot that's just arrived on this island or being one of the animals that has discovered this robot that's just arrived on their island. When we returned to our STEM classroom, we actually discovered a message that had come over the radio receiver from the Wild Island that was in, in some sort of code. It was, you know, a whole lot of letters and, and numbers. And so we needed to then decode that message, which we discovered was written in hexadecimals. I knew two codes because in another lesson did like pixel art with binary, but then also I put it into hexadecimal. So that's how I knew it, because it was either a number and a letter and then a number and a number. And that was a message from the robot. Hello friends, I need your help. I'm on a remote wild island. My vision senses are not working. I need help to move around the island safely. Please can you help me? I suggest that we get a map so we know where things are so we don't just close up and then she randomly walks into a tree. And on Google Earth it shows like where the trees are and everything if you zoom in so we can kind of figure out the landscape and everything. Becoming expert coders, we created some block code for her to help her navigate around the island. With this button press, go forwards 10 steps. If something's in front of you, do this or else do something else. So he would kind of like be able to move around himself. And it sort of be better because then it can draw like a mental map of where things are around the island. They were then given a security identification, you know, just a simple little prop that helps them know, okay, I'm a coder and that's an actual profession, that's a job. Then as those expert coders, we then were shipped back to the island and there we were able to help her by programming our codes that we had created to help her navigate safely around that island. We're almost to the shady spot, we scouted out. I was a facilitator more so than taking on a character. I was there to help build the play and pose some problems as we were playing along with our robot. They really loved having an actual robot that was there and moving and they could see and visualise and then also communicate with. And I think it also then, I guess, really amplified the play because there was this robot that was interacting with us and we needed to interact back and we could ask questions and they would respond and also, you know, we could give that robot commands and help work out where we needed to go and the robot was moving along to how we'd said. And the students certainly took on their expert role that they thought that they could help Roz, that they had enough knowledge that they were going to be able to help. 
I think because you're in the play, you're really involved and you can be involved with every student that's in there because even if you're not directly playing with them at the moment, they're still in the world with you. Whatever we're doing, we're playing, we're on the island. So little plays can happen within that world that we're all in together.